Ghosts are totally delicious when they're made out of meringues and these little ghost meringues are really easy to make. They sit perfectly on top of my blood red velvet cake which is moist and delicious and perfectly coupled with my cream cheese frosting. Let's begin with the meringue ghosts. You want to whip these up in a glass or metal bowl and the first thing we're going to do is clean the bowl and to do that we're going to be using some white vinegar so pour that into the bowl and wipe it with a paper towel. Once it's dry you're going to add in two large egg whites and using the whisk attachment we're going to be whipping these up for about 30 seconds just to break them up. Stop the mixer and add some cream of tartar and then you're going to whip that up for about a minute. The mixture is going to get really frothy and reach soft peaks. While the mixer is on high speed, we're going to be adding some caster sugar, one tablespoon at a time. Once all of that is in there, and you want to leave about a 20 second gap in between each tablespoon, you're going to continue whipping for about three or four minutes, then stop the mixture. The mixture is going to be nice and thick and glossy. Add some vanilla extract and whip for a final 30 seconds. Add that to a piping bag fitted with a large round tip and to a baking tray with some baking paper. You're going to add some little dabs of that meringue to the corners of the baking tray and stick the baking paper on top. Then you're going to pipe your little meringue ghosts. This is the way I'm piping them, but you can pipe them any size or any way that you like. These are going to go in the oven to bake for one hour. Do not open the oven door or they will collapse. Let them cool completely in the oven. Once they're baked and cooled, we're going to be using some black food gel and a food safe paintbrush to paint little eyes and mouths on our ghosts. You can make these up to two days in advance and store them in an airtight container on top of some baking paper. Let's move on to that red velvet cake. To a large bowl or jug, you're going to add one and a half cups of buttermilk, three eggs, three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil, two tablespoons of vanilla extract and two tablespoons of liquid red food dye. Whisk that up and then to a separate bowl you're going to be adding your flour, caster sugar, baking powder, bicarb soda, some unsweetened cocoa powder and some salt. Whisk that up using a hand whisk and then you're going to add your wet ingredients to the dryer. I'm switching over to a handheld electric mixer and we're going to mix this until everything is nice and well combined. Now guys, here is why we always make sure we scrape down our bowl because the mixer, no matter how good it is, and my new Cuisine Art mixer is really good, it's never going to get the bottom of the bowl perfectly. So to make sure that our batter is mixed properly, we always want to make sure that we scrape down the bowl. Once everything is mixed, you want to add that to two 8 inch cake tins which have been sprayed and lined with baking paper. These are going to go in the oven to bake for 45 minutes on 140 degrees Celsius. Once they've cooled, take them out of the baking tin, peel away that baking paper and use a serrated knife to trim the top of each cake. Today we're going to be using my lovely cream cheese frosting recipe which is perfectly tangy and delicious and super creamy. Add a dab of that to a serving plate or today I'm using a cake board. Spread it around a little bit and then add your first layer of cake. That's going to help the cake stick to the board. Pipe a ring of frosting around the top of that, then fill it in with some more frosting. Spread it around using an offset spatula and then add the second layer of cake. We're going to crumb coat the cake, so add some frosting around the sides and top. This is just a thin layer of frosting so that it traps the crumbs of the cake and that way they don't end up in the final layer of frosting. 
This is gonna go in the fridge to chill for at least one hour, but I actually leave it in there overnight. Add a final layer of frosting around the sides and top of your cake, smoothening it out with a cake scraper and an offset spatula. Then I'm gonna be using some of my delicious one bowl chocolate sauce recipe and the recipe for that is on my website, thescranline.com and I'm gonna drizzle it around the sides of the cake. Then I'm gonna cover the top with some more chocolate sauce and we're gonna finish this with our super cute little ghost meringues. Guys, if you've never tried my red velvet cake recipe or my red velvet cupcakes, you're really in for a treat. Try this recipe, you won't regret it. Super, super delicious. And the cream cheese frosting is perfectly paired with that moist red velvet cake. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. There are more recipes up on screen right now if you wanna continue watching. Make sure you hit the like button and I'll see you all on the next episode of The Scran Line.